episode 133, Social Media Mindset. Welcome to Gratitude Geek, the relationship marketing podcast, helping micropreneurs find your micro-influencer magic. I'm your host, Candice Rodarty, and this week I'm joined by chocolatier turned award-winning digital marketer, Nicole Porter. Nicole helps small businesses navigate the large and overwhelming world of social media by focusing on authenticity. She has a specific interest in working with small businesses and nonprofits to help them navigate the ever-changing world of social media. Nicole creates awareness for the missions of these organizations with an emphasis on connection and real conversation with their audiences. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I am excited to have a different and unique conversation around social media marketing or digital marketing. Somebody schooled me recently and told me that it's digital marketing, not social media marketing, but I don't know. I think digital also includes your website and other things like that. I agree. I think digital is more further encompassing than social media marketing. It can include SEO and Google and Google ads and all that stuff. And social media is strictly the social channels. You have a very unique and interesting story. Chocolate, kids, college, (laughs) awards. So tell us your unique story. How'd you get to where you are? Okay. So um, I got my degree in marketing way back when Mark Zuckerberg was still building Facebook in his dorm room. So uh, things were a little different in the marketing world back then. Um, And then I became a chocolatier for about 10 years. Um, I had a few small brick and mortar shops. Um, I live on Cape Cod, so we have a very touristy area down here. And um, that was a lot of fun for a little while. Um, But when my second son was born, he's 11 now. I, it was very hard to have a brick and mortar and, you know, be a mom. And so I actually moved my chocolate making to my home kitchen and I would stand in my kitchen all day long and literally hand dip pieces of chocolate one by one. Um, and that was awesome. And that's really how I got my start in digital marketing. I would market everything on Facebook and Instagram at the time. And I actually used Reddit um, and I did email marketing And um, it was really successful for a long time. Um, And then I had my third son. And I was like, you know what? Now I have three sons and I am done hand dipping chocolate in my kitchen all day long. Um, And at that point, I had a, I was in a BNI because I did corporate gifting and things like that. And the mortgage broker said, can you come to my office and teach me how to use Facebook? I always see your posts. And I had had other people ask me. And so I said, sure. And I went down and I taught her how to use Facebook and I made her a whole plan. And then when I went to leave, she paid me and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to do this. And um, that's when I started making that shift. I stopped doing chocolate all the time and um, I started doing it for a restaurant and uh, I incorporated my business almost five years ago now. And uh, so that is how I got to where I am today. Um, I'm living on the Cape doing my social media marketing. I have the three sons, a uh, husband, two rescue dogs, and six female ducks roaming around my backyard right now. So that is the the long and short of my story. I have three things I want to pull out of that. Um, so I, my husband and I spent a couple of days on Cape Cod last October, I think we were going to Nantucket. So we were there before we went to Nantucket and then after we went to Nantucket. And the day that before we left to Nantucket, uh, I found this amazing bra shop called Zoe and Company in Mm -hmm. Hyannis. So I want to give a plug to that bra shop. Awesome. Zoe and Company, professional bra fitters. They did an excellent job. So if you're in Cape Cod, you're listening to the show, you're a friend of Nicole's and you need a good bra. I just gave a plug too. They, she, it was fantastic. It was an excellent. I mean, of all the things that stand out to me from that weekend was the Ben and Jerry's ice cream cone. Because <laughs> no, I've never lived anywhere where they had Ben and Jerry's ice cream shops. So that was kind of cool. And um, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream cone and the bra fitting. So there you go. That's my experience with Cape Cod. How long have you lived there? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I've been here, I think 17, 18 years now. Um, yeah. It wasn't what I was expecting. Cape Cod was it? Yeah. It was, How was it different? I was expecting it to be sort of like a vacation destination and, and it was, you know, it was just a, it was a, an, it was a town. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's a bunch, you know, it's just a city like everything else. I don't know. Yeah. Really cute. The, the, the strip of, 
uh, I don't know in Hyannis what that strip of where all the shops are, but it was super cute. Yeah. But you know, it wasn't. I I don't know. I was just always expecting Cape Cod to be this place with these mega mansions and all these beaches. But maybe oh, I didn't gosh. go to the right area. Yeah, I was gonna say you can <laughs> definitely find those. Um, it depends on where you go. You definitely can have different experiences depending, I think, on the town. And I think once you hit Hyannis and like a little further towards a bridge, it's definitely more year-round community. And then when you get down on the lower cape, like maybe Orleans down to Wealthy Truro, that's I what I kind of consider old Cape Cod, like it's you know, not a lot of people there in the winter, um, a lot of a lot more seasonal businesses. Um you know, more like national seashore beaches and things like that. Um, Chatham and Osterville have the the big the big houses that you're talking about where you go drive by and you're like, oh my God, and that's their third house. Um and but so I think you know every town kind of has their unique um you know their u- unique offering. And um but hyannis is definitely like I like you described it's like the city of yeah. of the Cape. So like we'll be like oh I gotta go to the city. Like that's where we <laughs> And I don't know why I had that impression because I live in a, de- a vacation destination myself and um, it's just a city, you know, in yeah. the summer, we just have more people than, <laughs> than in the yeah, winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Okay. Did you say that you used Reddit for your social media marketing? Did I hear that? I did. I yeah. have never talked to anybody about Reddit. So tell me about that. Okay. So this was kind of cool. So back... um it, it's a little probably a little different than you're thinking because Reddit's really known for their threads and their uh, forums. Um, but they also have these gift exchanges, which are really funky, right? So you sign up for these gift exchanges randomly and you kind of like put in your interests and then they match you with somebody anywhere in the world and you send them a gift, right? So if you, me and the third person signed up, I'm not, we're not necessarily sending gifts to each other. It could be like a different, you know, you send a gift to me and I'm sending a gift to somebody else. And it's a random, it's Secret Santa. And they have them for all different things. They have a big holiday time one, but they also have, you know, they have like Star Wars Secret Santa and, all, you know, all different themes and stuff. And so um, they had a marketplace at the time And I was listed on there, um, but kind of like an Etsy takeoff type thing. Um, And it was really a lot of like offbeat stuff. So we would sell like chocolate covered bacon and bacon truffles and spicy sea salt, caramel bark and um, all kinds of cool stuff. But um, they it was all based around these secret Santas and the um, forums were all on the secret Santas. And so um, it was a really cool thing while I did it because I would be sending chocolate across the world and um, I mean, all over the place. And it was it was pretty cool. I don't think I've ever told that story before. (laughs) I love that story. I had no idea. So if you're watching on video, you can see it. But for those of you listening to the podcast, go check the show notes. I'll post a picture of it in the show notes. Um, I actually belonged to a Secret Santa many years ago, probably 15 years ago. And this R2-D2 was the gift I received. And it is made up of my name. It's just my name, Candace, over and over again in different colors and different inks. So every line, every blue, all of that, if you look really close to it, it's my name over and over and over again. Just... I'll just just line after line of mine it's amazing so i'll i will put i can't remember off the top of my i can't remember off the top of my head right now who the artist is but the, a link a picture and a link will be in the show notes so i love this whole idea do they still do that on reddit because that's the kind of thing I that i so. would find a lot of fun yeah i i'm pretty sure they do and um like famous people sometimes get involved like bill gates is a big one that like he'll send somebody like a secret Santa, whoever gets him. Um, I, I don't remember. There were other famous people that were involved and it's all luck of the draw. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure they still do it and you can sign up and get, I mean, maybe you'll get matched with somebody really neat. So there used to be a website called Reddit Gifts and apparently six months ago it was shut down and now Reddit Gifts has been redirected to Reddit. So there's, and there is a Reddit secret <sighs> Santa group. I have never used Reddit other than every once in a while it shows up in my search results and I read the, through the 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 um the answers to my question. So um this is new for me. I I I know Reddit's a great resource and it's used by a lot of people but I've never used it myself. But wow. Yeah, it so was who would, it was very who, cool. Who could benefit from using Reddit in the way that you used Ooh, it? That's a good question. I think um 
people that have maybe like a little bit of a different product or a different service, right? That's kind of the niche that I found there at that point was it wasn't mainstream. It was if you're an artist, if you're a maker, um, a creator of some sort that is very unique, I think that was would be the place for you. Um, you know, I don't use it currently for my social media business. Um, you know, I probably could go on there and talk about social media, but, um, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later on in the conversation, but it on Reddit, even more than the other platforms, it's going to be about relationship building because you're really, it's all about conversing there because your images aren't as prominent. Um, so you know, that the long and short of that is if you're interested in building relationships and you have a unique product or service, I think that it could work well for you. Is it like, could be, I'm, I really don't know anything about Reddit. So is it like other social media where you make friends? Goodness. I haven't used it in so long. Um, I don't think so. I think okay. it's a, you can't, I, yeah, I don't think so, but you might want to like Google that answer because okay. um, <laughs> I could, I didn't, I didn't at that. It wasn't when I used it um, regularly, that was not how it was used um, as like making friends and stuff. It was more um, like questions and answers and talking to people that, that was the main thing is conversing and talking to people and going back and forth and really having a conversation about a certain topic and lending your expertise um, or seeking somebody else's, um, that could be another way to use it. So do you think that, um, telegram and what's that other one? What's the one that's owned by Facebook? WhatsApp may have replaced Reddit in that way. Or do you think Reddit's still strong? I think Reddit's still strong. I think people that like that format are still there. Um, I think it really is a place people go for knowledge um, and to talk about things that are, you know, have a little more meat to them. Um, so yeah, I definitely think so. It also is at the top of the search engines. Whenever you do a search for something and the answers on Reddit, it'll be like one of the first three um, yeah. links that you see at the top of the link. So um, it, it's a great place if you if you are really knowledgeable about something and you're like you know you're, you you want to be the one that everybody thinks of, I think that might be a good way to promote yourself as well. Yeah, I so, agree with that. I don't. I again never really used Reddit other than to read through answers to questions that I might have every once in a while have. So um, cool. All right, that was a. That, I love it. I learned something new today. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about BNI because I'm a huge BNI fan. As a matter of fact, when I moved to my new state, I live in Michigan now. And I moved here from Texas. I joined a BNI chapter before I even bought a house. Oh wow! I knew how important it would be for creating a network in a new town where I knew no one. I mean, I came here. I we, I didn't know a single person other than the real estate agent who who sold us a house. Right. So, um, talk to me about your BNI experience. Are you still in BNI? Um, I am not in BNI currently, but that is more just because I have a bunch of kids and it's hard to get <laughs> to get out at seven in the morning. Um, but I am in similar networking groups, I believe strongly in uh, networking and uh, relationship building. And um, so I absolutely recommend that to anybody that wants to grow a network, a strong network. Um, I, I love BNI and I love the... Um, I love the format, right? I, I love the fact that you create deep relationships with people. And I think that's one of the biggest benefits. It's not just going and like saying, oh, I, I'm going to refer somebody this week or someone's going to give me business, right? If you go into it with a selfish mindset, uh, I don't think you're going to get as much out of it. But when you go into it with the mindset of, I really want to build these deep relationships, I want to get to know people beyond um, you know, beyond the business and, and really know them as a person, you're going to find yourself referring much more easily. And the same will happen when they get to know you beyond the business. When they get to know your dogs and your kids and your ducks, they're going to be much more, <laughs> much more willing and able and likely to refer. So I think, you know, that's a huge thing to to remember when you're going into these meetings um, is just go beyond the meeting and go beyond the 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 person with the business card is build the relationship, go deep. It's changed a lot in the last couple of years because when the pandemic hit, BNI immediately went online. 
And uh, I am still in a, a virtual only chapter. So my chapter meets um, there. Most of the folks in the chapter are based in the Detroit area. And I live on the west side of, of Michigan. So I'm about three hours away from where, where all the rest of them are. Um, but because we're mm -hmm. virtual, it doesn't matter. Um, but the reason why I decided to transfer to that chapter is because I had, because B and I went online, went virtual, I had built a network nationwide throughout through the BNI system doing speed networking, whatever. And um, no one else in my local chapter here had seen the benefit of growing a nationwide network through the tools that BNI was offering free of charge. <laughs> uh, and my best referral partner lives in St. Louis, right? That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I love so that. Um, yeah. And it's, a you know, when I do my, you know, during, if you're, if you've never been listener, if you've never been to a BNI mm -hmm. meeting, one of the things that you do during the meeting is you talk about your thank you for close, well, not your thank you for close business. You talk about a referral that you passed. And there are times where I pass six referrals and not one of them is to a member of the chapter, but they're all BNI members that I've met through speed networking and the other BNI things that happen. Uh, and it's just so much bigger your network is so much bigger than the people that you hang out with in your networking group. Um, so I just, that's important. All right. Is there anything you want to add about networking before we move on? I don't think so. I think you covered it. I love that. <laughs> I love that tip. I really, cause I completely agree. Um, thought that was great. And there are a lot of national and international networking groups that do the same thing. I know that polka, polka dot powerhouse is an mm -hmm. international networking association for women. And they are really good at the same thing, developing relationships across borders. Um, it's amazing how many women I meet that are, that belong to their polka dots. <laughs> are you a polka dot? No, I'm not a polka dot, but I know about a hundred of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know them and they're awesome. And they, they, and I have nice relationships with them. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a great one. That yeah, is there, a great one. There, there are some really, really good uh, networking groups out there. Okay. Let's talk about social media mindset. So just, I mean, this conversation, this uh, topic is big, mm -hmm. but mindset is always the thing that prevents people from being their best. Like, it, or mindset is what makes somebody uh, excel. So talk about the social media mindset of the best social media marketers. So I think a couple of things that um, really come to mind when I talk about social media mindset is um, number one, going back to that um, relationship building, right? And using these platforms for what they are created for, which is to build relationships and be social. Um, you know, a mentor of mine a long time ago said, it's not marketing media, it's social media. So you have to show up with the intent to interact with people. Um, otherwise, it's probably not going to work the way you want it to. Um, a lot of people think you're going to put content out and then people are going to come flocking and it's it's a magic bullet. And that is not the case. Um, so I think, you know, going, going into social media with a mindset of, you know, I need to talk to people. It's not magic. It's a tool in my toolbox, but it's not magic and it takes time and it takes work. And third, it takes focus. It takes, you know, you you really need to be showing up where your people are, um, uh, you know, and I think that's where a lot of my clients get very overwhelmed because there's always the new, the next thing, the next thing's coming along and they feel like they have to hop on the train and that could be great if that's where your audience is all going. They're also hopping on the train. But if they're not, then you're going to be spinning your wheels and you're not going to really be getting um, getting anywhere with it. So I'm a big fan of, you know, taking your, you, you know, looking at where your audience is and really focusing your efforts and your time. And again, going deep and not wide on these platforms. Um and I think a lot of people will see better results when they change to those those three things. All right, expand on go deep, not wide. What do you mean by that? So instead of say you have an hour every week to spend on your social media and you say, okay, I am going to put content out on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, <laughs> LinkedIn, and I'm going to go everywhere and your hour is going to go by real fast and you, you might not necessarily be reaching everybody you want to reach. Um, 
what I'm suggesting instead of doing something like that is saying, okay, my audience is on LinkedIn and Facebook, just, you know, for instance, this is my audience where they are. So I'm going to take my hour and I'm going to create some content maybe for 20 minutes. And then for the rest of that hour, I'm going to go onto these platforms and I'm going to talk to people and I'm going to see what's going on there. And I'm going to give feedback to people. I'm going to give encouragement to people. I'm just going to show up and and touch base with people that I want to have a relationship with. And I think that for people is really where they miss the boat. They don't do that. They don't pick just a couple of platforms and really focus and interact and put their content out on these platforms. Um, And then they kind of, they're like, oh, well, social media doesn't work for me. And that's not necessarily the case. So when I say go deep, I mean, pick a platform, focus it, put your efforts there, as opposed to feeling like you have to be everywhere because it's not the case. Does it have to be every day? Do you have to do that every day? What's a good time frame? I I don't do it every day and it's my job. Um, And so (laughs) I, I feel a good rule of thumb is posting. So let me, let me rewind a little bit. First of all, I'm a big fan of batching your content so that you don't have to be doing it every single day. Um, So my rule of thumb is post between three and seven times a week. So, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or once a day. Um, So somewhere in that range between three and seven times a week. And then I actually put in my calendar twice a week to go in and make sure I'm checking my comments. You don't want to leave people hanging um, and going in and interacting with people on my chosen platforms that I really want to go deep on and build an audience further there. So you're only checking your engagement twice a week. I have, no, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm engaging with other people twice a week. I said that wrong. Okay. Um, but I do have my notifications so that if somebody responds to me, I'm responding within that day. Okay. okay. I don't that, think that um, twice a week is probably, yeah, probably but, enough for that. Sorry. But twice a week, you're going on spending an hour of scrolling your feed, commenting on people's um, yeah. stuff. Yep. So um how do you make sure that you're only seeing the stuff from the people that you want to see the stuff from? So if there's somebody specific that I want to make sure I'm touching base with, I'll keep a spreadsheet. Um, and I actually do this for a lot of my clients as well. Um, and keep a tab zone the last time I checked in with them, because, you know, if I go to their profile and, you know, maybe they haven't posted in a while, or I don't feel like it can really give relevant feedback. I might give it a a like or something, but if I don't feel like I can add to the conversation, I might not. Um, But it's somebody that I really want to make sure that I'm showing up for and I'm staying in touch with. Um, I'll make sure that I have that in a spreadsheet. And if I go back and look and I said, oh, geez, you know, I haven't touched base with them in a month. I'm going to make sure that I am going and, you know, maybe even just sending them a message and saying, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. How how are things going? if That's it's somebody a I know well really enough. good twist on the top 100. Yeah, you because know, a lot of marketers they they have a list of the top 100 people, the top or the top 50 people, or the top 25 people that they want to engage with regularly. That they're you know their mm-hmm. ideal partner, you know referral partner, um, and th- to have that in a spreadsheet and to keep track of the last time you engaged with them, so that you know that you're in their face. You know, because it takes eight connections. Really, it takes eight connections before you really make it, a, a, you know, you develop enough of a relationship with someone that they know, like, and trust you. So uh, having that spreadsheet to make sure that you are in the face of the people that you really want to engage with is an excellent idea. What does that spreadsheet look like? Tell me, share your headers with me. Because <laughs> um, this is a tool that I'm going to replicate. <laughs> So I do it in Google. So I use Google Sheets and um, because I do Google folders for all of my clients and then I have one for myself. And so um, in the left hand column, I'll have their name. And then the next column is usually their hero platform. So whichever one they're most active on. Um, Then I sometimes, depending on if it's me or somebody who I'm doing it for, will have their follower count. And then the next column will have the date of last interaction. Um, and interaction is a comment or a share, not just a, a like, or a, um, heart or something, you know, it's, it's a genuine feedback, not, 
not a um just a quick thing so um, all you're tracking um, is the last and, interaction oh, sorry, go ahead. sorry so you're, you're just tracking the last interaction not all the interactions no i do track all interactions okay. so what i'll do is when so say you know it's my hour and i go in i make a new column and i move that column out to the to the right and then that next column will have the the date of interaction. So, and then the next time I go in, I move that column out to the right, just create a new column in there. And then, so the most recent one is gonna be closest to the person's name on far on the left. And then the other ones are, um, you know, kind of going out. DIY I can mark- send you an example. <laughs> I, okay, DIY markers in the show notes, there will be a link to a sample spreadsheet because this right here is, this nugget right here, this is like the best piece of nugget that we've had in weeks. All right. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. So this tip, if you implement, I mean, I was going to ask Nicole to share three things to implement to make your social media more authentic. Uh, this right here, this top 100 list or whatever, you know, whatever it is, top 25, just pick 25. If if you, if 100 is overwhelming, pick 25. If 25 is overwhelming, pick 10. But 10 people that you want to engage with regularly, that you want to be in their face. Like y'all know, I've been telling you for, for, um, what is this August? I've been telling you since January that I want to interview Neil deGrasse Tyson on this podcast. So if I had a spreadsheet, whose name would be number one on that list? Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right. And I'd be, do I, I would be doing what Nicole just is teaching us to do. And guess what, what I'm going to start doing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that. Go to church people. This is it. The the church of social media engagement. Okay. Um, Anything else you want to add to for that? I I, thank you for sharing the spreadsheet sample. That is amazing. Yeah. Appreciate that. Absolutely. And you actually just gave me an idea for a new lead magnet. So I was like, Oh, people could, people want this. Okay. Um, So thank you. And also I want to, I want to kind of just say capitalize on something you just said was if 25 is overwhelming, do 10. You know, if 100 is overwhelming, do 25. 25 is overwhelming, do 10. And I talk to people about that all the time. Do what is manageable for you. And that's a lot where I say like, focus, go deep, don't go wide because people get so overwhelmed. They do. They get incredibly overwhelmed by all the stuff, right? And if you just do a little day by day, you're going to get so, so much further than other people who aren't doing it. And so I just, I wanted to pull that out, even though it's your podcast. Thank you for letting me pull out what you said, because it's so, so important to just do, you know, do what you can do, do what's manageable for you. And, and, you know, don't do comparisonitis. Just So let, let's, let's take this even further. Nicole just got a great idea for a lead magnet, magnet, right? She could take the snippet from this conversation, from this podcast conversation, and she could use that video or that audio in her lead magnet right? Or to promote the lead magnet. And if you get the lead ma- magnet done by August 23rd, a link to the lead magnet will be in the show notes, gratitudegeek.com episode 130. It's three, right? 133. <laughs> so get it done before August 23rd. If you're listening on the day it drops, today's August 23rd. Just wanted you to know. Um, so, <laughs> oops. So, um, wow. Okay. Back to what, what, back to where I was going with that. Uh, Nicole got an idea for a lead magnet. Magnet. She's she can repurpose this information. She got ideas. We're collaborating, and that's really what you're doing on social media. You're getting ideas from each other and collaborating. My best ideas come from other people. I, don't, I you know, I just take them and make them my own. Don't just verbatim steal other people's stuff. I can't stand it when I see the same social media post by 25 different people, especially when they're network marketers. And they just change the bottom line to the name of their company instead of the company, the, the person who, who posted it before them. Don't do that. Come up with your own ideas. You know, do your own thing. All right. But you can dig into that, Nicole. All right. Um, do, 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 do. I lost my, I got so excited. I lost my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, let's talk about gratitude and attitude in social media. Dig into that for me. Okay. You know, I think, when when I when you first asked that question when we started talking back and forth on um through email about this, the thing that I really that stands out to me on social media is seeing the people behind the screen. And you know, really when when you interact with people, 
really kind of thinking about them as as a person and you know i i kind of go into it like when you know we're talking about relationship building and and you know just kind of being grateful that i have the opportunity to build a relationship with these people and not and again we're going deep and not wide and so kind of thinking like you know if this was somebody i was meeting in person what would this interaction be like and and how would i handle myself and um how how would it progress as opposed to somebody i'm just meeting on a screen um and i think that can make a really big difference in you know where how you interact with people and where the relationship goes from that point um you know it's i have kind of a, a silly example that i use a lot of times when i i say when some and this is in response to comments when somebody comes up to you in a store and they they ask you a question or they respond to something that you've said you're not just going to sit there and stare at them. And if you do that on social media, if you're not responding to your comments, that's really what it's like, right? And so thinking about these people as real people, taking this, if this was somebody in real life, how would I be responding to them? And, and how would I be building this relationship? You wouldn't be ignoring them. You wouldn't be giving them like, you know, short answers. You wouldn't just, you know, be like, oh, hey, nice post just to get something back from them. Um, you would really want to build that relationship and converse with them and learn about them and encourage them and all those things that we do with our real life relationships. So um, I think that's one of the biggest mindset uh, issues that people have with being online because it's behind a screen and that can be a little difficult for a lot of people. But um, when you think of it and, and you, you're really grateful for those relationships then it can make a big difference in what you're doing online. I'm about to date myself, but uh, <laughs> many years ago, I played this game called World of Warcraft, which was really the first major online multiplayer video game out there. I mean, I think a billion people played that game at some point. That number is probably inflated. But um, <sighs> and this is a long time ago. This is when my daughter, my daughter's 23 now, and my daughter was like, four when I started playing that game. So we're talking 20 years ago, but there is this guy. And back then we all became Facebook friends with each other because I don't know. I don't know why we never in a million years would I want to be Facebook friends with somebody I met in a video game today. But back then we became friends. Anyway, there's this one guy and I'm just gonna call him out. His name is Chris. I'm not even changing his name. But his name is Chris. And he was just awful in the game. His personality was horrible. And his wife also played. And I, one day, Chris wasn't playing and his wife was. And I said, why is he always just such a jerk? And she says, he's not like that in real life. That's not authentic. If he, if he, why, why, would, why was it okay to be somebody different online than you are in real life? And really, if that's the way you are online, isn't that really the way you are in real life? There's something There's to that piece there. of you, right? There's that. Yeah, I I agree that you should show up as yourself. And it's people don't want to see fake. They don't want to see, you know, polished. They want to see you. And that's why I talk a lot about my kids and my dogs and my ducks, because that resonates with somebody somewhere. And those are my people. And if they're not my people, that's okay. If they're not your people, then you'll find your people by being you and showing behind the curtain and just being yourself. Um, and it's hard. It is. It's hard. It's hard to say, this is who I am, but this is who we are. I love that you have ducks because, you know, ducks that I have a, a friend named Christy going. She's a, 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 she's a social media manager. She doesn't do, she doesn't do what you do. I'm sorry. I said that the wrong way. She's a virtual assistant. <laughs> well, holy like, crap. No, she's a, she's a virtual assistant. And um, she has, she raises ducks too. And one day she posted a photo of her ducks and they were all walking in a line. And she goes, I've got my ducks in a row. <laughs> there oh, are so I love many, it. There's so many things you can do with your ducks. <laughs> there's a lot of duck puns. I had no idea how many duck puns there are until I, I got ducks. My ducks are new. 
Um, I just got them in April. And uh, so they're, they're new, but they're never in a row. They, they are never in a row. My ducks are just, they're all over the place. So we're, <laughs> they're together, but they're, my ducks are not in a row. I, uh, we, we babysat a cat when my daughter was in college and at her college, they allowed the students to have emotional support animals. And so one of her um, classmates had a cat and she wanted to go home to California for the six weeks of winter break. She didn't want to have to take the cat with her. So we cat sat there, her, her cat, his name was Teddy. He was so sweet. Uh, anyway, anyway, um, I managed to get all four because we have three cats. So I managed to get all four cats lined up in a row, <laughs> eating eating at that? the same time. And uh, I posted about be, being this cat herder, you know, the herder of cats, <laughs> because it was remarkable. They were all facing in the same direction. <laughs> and this cat, Teddy, he wasn't. Our cat Shade did not like Teddy at all. We couldn't have Teddy come back after, you know, we couldn't offer for Teddy to come stay with us anymore because Shade and Teddy did not get along. But <laughs> but Teddy got along well with the other two cats. So I don't know. I think Shade was just jealous. Anyway, yeah, they lined up in a row. And it's just like that, that photo. I don't I think I've got more engagement from that photo than any other thing that I posted that year. So, you know, your pets are, you know, you always post about your cats or your dogs or your ducks because I know. <laughs> it, it does it makes you human and i think my cats get yeah. more likes than i do oh my ducks get way more likes than i do i got i did an unboxing video of my ducks um because they um they send them to you when they're a day old and they ship them and um so i did an unboxing reel on my instagram and it has by far gotten more attention and likes and views than any other piece of content I've ever posted of my duck, a duck unboxing. A duck can survive without a mother at one day old. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. yes, it can. Wow. Yes. But you, it needs something to take care of it. So it, it, they come with like a little heat pack and like a little, um, they have something on them, I think, like a type of placenta thing. Um, but they have like another little food thing and it's one day shipping. But once they arrive, they need to be in a heated environment with water and food very soon. So you can't just leave them like for days without a mother. It, they need to be taken care of as a mother would take care of them. And how long did it take for them to imprint on you? <laughs> Not long. They actually imprinted on my youngest son because he was obsessed. <laughs> so they love him. No, it wasn't me, even though I'm the food provider. Yeah, isn't it funny how animals um, pick their favorite human? Because um, our animals each have a favorite human. Like Shade is, his human is my husband. Luna's human is our, my, is my daughter. And Snow's human is me. I mean, and they, that is, that's it. Right? Yes. Sh Shade and Luna only give me attention if they want food. And the other two aren't around. Right. And the same goes for the for the other two. Snow only gives Shane or Dorothy attention if he, she wants food. So it, it's just interesting how um how animals I mean, and they're smart. Have you seen aunt, these cats that have these buttons where they can communicate with their humans? Yes. And I I've mean, seen it with dogs, too. It's nuts. It is. So there is now because you if you watch one video on YouTube, you see all the videos on YouTube. Uh, maybe we could dig into algorithm here. Do we have time? We have to, we we have we can spend five minutes on algorithm, but um, <laughs> I I have because I watched one video. Now I see all the videos of the cats and the and the little buttons. And there's this one where a woman came home from work and her cat immediately starts pushing the litter button, the litter button, litter button. Well, we they have a litter. We have a litter genie, a litter robot too. It's a and a a rotating litter box that cleans it automatically cleans after every time they go to the bathroom well when it's full the red light beeps so the cat she walks in the front door and the cat keeps pushing the little button on his little button you know his little button things so she walks into the to the area where the little box is and the red light's beeping it's, it's how how do they they're smart <laughs> these animals are so smart <laughs> they are super smart like Crazy. we we said that about the ducks we they we have a fenced in backyard and they kept getting out and I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And my neighbor, <clears throat> my poor neighbor was like, so your ducks are out again. And they're so sweet. I love my neighbors. And they, <laughs> and so finally we figured it out. She's like, 
can't believe how smart they are. I can't believe they figured out how to get through this little tiny spot in the fence where they knew. And it's funny because I don't know that like they all they do when they get out is try to come back. So I don't know why they want to get out. I think they just wanted to see if they could or something. But um, so smart. How did I couldn't figure it out for days and they were. The time, like my, the time my dog Muffy was looking through my front window and all the time I thought she was in the backyard and then she was in the front window. So she'd gotten out and then she was looking at me through the front window. Like, let me back in. Let me back in. Oh my God. <laughs> They're so smart. Okay, let's talk about the algorithm. Why is it that I see so many videos of cats pushing buttons to communicate? Yes. So in general, across the platforms, it's not just one. Um, When you show interest in a topic or a person and you engage with it, then that could be a comment. It could be watching a video, whatever. The algorithm says, oh, they like that. I'm going to show them more. Um, And which is always kind of funny when trolls start commenting on things and they say, I hate this. I don't want to see it. Get it off my feed. I'm like, well, now it's going to show up more because you commented on it instead of hitting hide this video or whatever it is. So when you start commenting on people that you want to see and hear from, they're going to show up more and more and more in your um, in your feed. And so it's actually when you're trying to build relationships and you're trying to build a business, it's a good thing. Um, if you don't want to see 12,000 cat videos, maybe not. But in general, as it relates to what we were talking about before and staying in touch with people, it makes it a lot easier because as you start to engage with those folks, they will come back in your feed again and again because you're engaging. And it's kind of a cyclical effect or a snowball effect, whatever, you, whichever you want to call it but um you know you engage the engagement and reach kind of go together um and engagement and the way that you know things are going to show up on your feed they, they go together as well so the more you engage with something or the more somebody engages with you they're you're going to see their content and they're going to see your content so um engage with the things that you are passionate about the people you're passionate about, the people you want to build relationships with, the companies you want to build relationships with, um, and you'll start to show up to each other more and more and more. So if you don't want to see that on your feed, you click those three dots and you hit hide. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. Do not don't comment. comment. Because... <laughs> or you will become a troll and you just say no to trolling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Yes, just say no to trolling. Well, we oh oh, wow, we've we've really covered it a lot. Um, d- give me one one or two tools that people who are doing social media management themselves uh, can use so they can manage their social media better. Do you have a couple okay. of those? Yes. Um. So I'm a big fan of using Meta's Business Suite for Facebook and Instagram. If you're going to schedule, um, it's free. And it's really gotten a lot better over the past six months. Um, You can use it for Facebook groups, for um, Facebook pages, and for Instagram pages. And the algorithm likes when you keep things in-house. So if you are able to schedule from there, it's going to go further. Um, So I'm a big fan of using that tool. I'm a big fan of using Buffer. That's another one that you can use for free. And so if you you can schedule... um, you can schedule Facebook and Instagram from there, but I, I don't um, because of the in-house stuff. But I like to use it for Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, and you can use it for LinkedIn pages or LinkedIn profiles. So that makes things really easy. Um, I also am a big fan of using Asana. That is a uh, free project management tool that you can use. Um, And I use it as a rotating to-do list because in my company, we have a lot of repetitive tasks. Um, You know, every Monday we do this client, every Tuesday we do this client. And so what I do is I put in, you know, every Saturday I do my own social media content um, and it pops up and then I can check it off. And sometimes a little unicorn goes across the screen and it's awesome. And then it just pops back up the next Saturday. So I know next Saturday, this is something that's on my to-do list that I need to do and that I need to have that in my, um, in my schedule that day. Um, And you can do that with your social media interaction as well. Um, So like Tuesday and Thursday, you know, put in, you know, interact with or 
you know, check my interaction spreadsheet that you're going to have as a freebie because I'm going to get that to you by August 23rd. And, <laughs> but, you know, check my, check my spreadsheet and then, um, you know, you'll, you'll have it in there. You won't forget and um, it'll repeat. So talk to me about Asana, Asana, Asana. Um, I use Trello and HoneyBook for basically mm -hmm. what I think that you're using Asana, Asana, Asana. I want to say Asana, Asana, um, that you're using Asana. So um, the thing I don't like about Trello is that I can't see what I'm doing as a spreadsheet. It's just these cards. And I, even when I'm doing my Google calendar, I put Google calendar in schedule mode, not in day mode so that I just see the list of things that are happening today, not as a calendar, but as a list, I'm a list person. Mm -hmm. So is Asana more list oriented or is it more that cards and it's more list oriented, which is actually why I chose it um, because I didn't like the cards on Trello. Um, you can, I think they added that option. So if you like that style, you can have it, but you can have a list by the day um, or you can have it by the week or you can have it by the month. And I often look, um, I start by looking at the month and then I go to the week because I, I like to look at my week as a big picture. Um, and so there's actually a few options as like you can work with what works best for you, which I love. Um, do you have an affiliate link for Asana? We'll put it in the um, show notes if you do. I don't, but I'm going to get one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do, have you ever offered any classes on Meta B Business Suite? Because I get a lot of questions about it and I'm not really a Facebook fan, so I don't use it. Um, but can you direct people in the audience to how to use, because it, it does have a learning curve. So number one, have you ever taught a class on how to use it? And if you do, how do we get a hold of that class? Or do you have a favorite person who teaches on how to use Meta Business Suite? Um, so maybe this isn't a direct answer, but I haven't taught a class, um, but I do have a membership where I help people with that type of stuff. Um, and so it's not a course, but there are resources on the back end of that membership where I have videos that walk you through how to use it. Um, and I do group coaching every month with that membership program. And so um, we can, we talk a lot about things like that. And that's what it's for. It's to pick my brain on how do I use this? How does this work? Um, you know, how could I schedule this? Um, so that, that would probably be the best option for somebody that wants to, to learn how to use business suite. And who is your target audience for that group? Um, it is small solopreneurs who need help doing their own social media, um, but cannot hire somebody to come on and do it. So we give them content as well with that membership. Um, so captions and graphics, and then encourage them to make it their own. Um, but it is very, for the very small entrepreneur. Wow. Cool. That sounds like a great um, different. I have a membership sort of program too, and it's really similar to what you're doing. Um, I think we have a different, um, Areas is zones of genius, though. Yes, or different zones of genius. So there's you know, something for everybody. But I could see where we could cross over, and we or we could collaborate in the future, because collaboration is groovy, Not man. That. Totally groovy. All right, uh, I have just a couple more questions because it's time to wrap up. So um, let's talk about three things that a micropreneur or solopreneur can do today to shift their social media mindset if they're struggling. Okay, the number one thing is post less, engage more. So cut down on your posting and up your engagement. Um, and really you know, focus your mindset around engage more. Um, talk to people. That's it. Talk to people on these platforms. Um, the second tip is focus on the person behind the screen. Um, and we talked a lot about that during this podcast episode, but it's really important. Think about these things as if they are in real life, right? Think about, you know, you're not just talking to somebody behind a screen. Well, if, if this person was sitting, standing next to me, how would I speak to them? How would I interact with them? Um, and I think the, the third one is give back. Don't go into it as um, what can I get from this person and what do I want? And um, think about what can I give? What can I contribute to the conversation? Um, what can I do for them that might help them? You know, even the comment helps them um, because it's going to show their content to more people. Uh, so go into it with 
I think, a mindset of giving back and not taking, and it'll get you further yourself, even though that's not the intention. That's the law of reciprocity, y'all. Y'all, you give and you receive, but you don't necessarily receive from the person that you gave to. Like that Secret Santa thing. You give <laughs> and you receive. Secret Santa is tangible law of reciprocity. Social media is intangible reciprocity. <laughs> I love it. All right. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to answer? Oh, my goodness. We went over so much. Um I don't think so. You gave me a great idea for a lead magnet. So thank you. Um, and yeah, this is a wonderful interview. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so this is episode 133, gratitudegeek.com 133. All of Nicole's links will be in the show notes and all the tools that we talked about. Cause this is a tool packed episode. I love tools, marketing toolbox. Got to have a marketing toolbox. All right. Last question. It's my favorite question for whom or what are you most grateful? Um, I am by far most grateful for my family. Um, I am blessed to have a wonderful family, uh, my husband and my three boys and my mom and ex- sister and extended family. Um, and they're just wonderful, supportive people. And I'm so grateful for them. Thanks for joining us this week for Gratitude Geek, the relationship marketing podcast, helping micropreneurs find your micro influencer magic. Your time is valuable, and I am ever so grateful that you chose to spend your time with us today. Be sure to check the show notes at gratitudegeek.com, episode 133, for links to all the groovy resources (laughs) mentioned today, and of course, to connect with Nicole Porter. And while you're there, why not subscribe to the show on Audible, iTunes, Stitcher, or any of your favorite podcast players. Our theme music is Track 14 by Rev Brock and Soul Lily. I've been your host, Candice Fridardi. Join me on my mission to spread gratitude, so seeds of appreciation and harvest a bounty of generosity and kindness. Stay groovy, my friends. Stay groovy, my friends.